Hello and welcome to OMG Tour Life. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Michelle, aka OMG Michelle. This is the very first episode of my new podcast slash YouTube series. Essentially, what I want for this series to be is some sort of informative resource for young people, namely young women who are looking to start working in the music industry, particularly the live music industry and the touring industry. I just remember when I was growing up and dreamt of working in this world, there was no real resource for me to be able to turn to and figure out how to kind of get my foot in the door. There was no way for me to Google how to get into touring and actually find a realistic answer. So that's what I am hoping um, for all of this to be. So to give a little bit of background about me before I really jump into things with this first episode... Um, again, my name is Michelle. For those who don't know me, I'm primarily a merchandise manager. I have also been a tour manager and a tour photographer in the past. I most recently have been working for artists such as Pink Sweats, Walk the Moon, and Lewis the Child. And if you've been following me for a long time, you most likely know me from my work with The Wonder Years. And I got my start in touring within the pop punk warp tour music scene with bands such as Broadside, Amorosa, Selfish Things, trash boat, and so on. I've been working in live music pretty much since I was 16 years old, and over all of these years I've managed to meet so many different, unique, incredible people who all come from different backgrounds and of different ways that they started touring. So I wanted to start this series off with an episode about realistic ways that I think really anybody can get into touring. I want to be able to use all of the knowledge that I've acquired, all the stories that I've heard, tie it back with my own personal story and hopefully be able to shed some light on realistic ways that I genuinely think um, you yourself can get into touring. And if this helps even one person figure out their path, then that's all I could really hope for. So I'm just going to jump right into this. I think the number one most important thing to keep in mind when it comes to the music industry, the live music industry, touring, is that it starts locally. Now, I assume if you are watching or listening to this that you already go to a bunch of concerts, you probably love seeing your favorite band live, that's probably what sparked an interest in working in the live music industry for you to begin with, at least that's what sparked it for me and a lot of my peers. But if you're already going to a bunch of shows and seeing your favorite bands, then you are already on the right track. I remember when I was younger, teenager, going to shows here in Brooklyn, New York, going to shows with my friends was my absolute favorite thing in the whole world. And the bands that I listened to, they weren't huge. They were the Warped Tour scene bands who played to 500, maybe 1,000, maybe 2,000 people a night. And it wasn't that hard to be able to just interact with people in the crowd, make friends who are my age, and then after a show, maybe go talk to your favorite band and ask them how they got started in music, maybe even tell them that you want to work in music someday, and just make these genuine connections with people. The most important lesson that I hope you'll take away from all of this is that in the music industry, the most important thing at the very end of the day are the relationships that you make with people. It's definitely very intimidating to go out of your way and try to talk to new people, but it's well worth it at the end of the day when you're making genuine connections and meeting like-minded people who share your passion for music, who share the same love for the same craft as you. Your relationships with people will be what separates you from the crowd at the end of the day. I remember sometimes when I would go to shows while I was in high school, I would be talking to a band and they might mention to me that they don't have a place to sleep that night, that they have a drive from their show here in New York to some other city. And it's very hard for people to find affordable places to sleep in New York or places that are big enough to hold all of them because let's be honest, Brooklyn apartments are not that big. So, um, After running it by my mom, um, I would invite these bands to sometimes come and crash at like my childhood home because we have a whole separate um, like living room area where the bands could sleep. We have air mattresses, we have couches, and a lot of the times some of these smaller bands that I really liked would just come stay at my house. Um, We would have breakfast together and then they would just go down to their next show the next day. And that helped solidify a lot of intrapersonal relationships that I had with certain people because 
you just really get to know people, especially when you get talking. And as these bands got bigger and they kept in mind that I really wanted to tour for a living too, you know, if they needed a merge person, they already knew that I was available and I was interested because it was something that I had expressed to them. So just talking to people and being kind um, really does go a long way. Another way that I think is really powerful for getting your start in live music is street teaming. Now, I don't know if that is still a popular thing in this day and age. I assume it's still around, but I remember when I was in high school, you could sign up to be on a record label street team or maybe a band's specific street team, and you would be communicating with a person on the band's record label or somebody on the band's team um, who was in charge of this street team, and you could sign up to work specific shows of the bands that were coming up and when you would sign up either the record label or the representative from the band's team would send you either posters or flyers or some kind of promotional material for you to distribute around your city in order to promote their upcoming show and in exchange for doing that um, the label or the band would provide you like a ticket or two to the show for yourself now, I'm not going to front. I was on the Fearless Records street team when I was 16 years old, and I would sign up to work shows for the Downtown Fiction because that was a band that I really liked, but they weren't a huge band. I don't know if anybody else remembers that band, but um, they are still some of my closest friends to this day. And essentially, my friends and I would sign up to work those shows, hand out flyers to the line, um, and because we already kind of had a relationship with some of the guys in the band and they knew that we wanted to work in music, they would let us come into the show early just out of their own free will, out of their own kindness. Not every band will do this, but um, they let us come into the shows early, watch how they run their meet and greet, watch how their merch gets set up and just kind of hang out and talk to them and kind of see the behind the scenes action of touring and working in live music a bit more and that was honestly a huge help and a huge boost to be able to do that which also then again ties into what i was saying earlier about how at its core it's the relationships that you build with people that really matter another great thing about street teaming is the fact that when you are signing up to work these shows you are speaking with somebody directly from the record label if you are doing a great job and getting to know this person, then you can even email them one day or talk to them and tell them that you are interested in perhaps working at the label one day, perhaps inquire about an internship, inquire about other opportunities, and just really make it known that this was something that you were interested in taking to the next level. And I'm sure whoever is speaking to you on the other end is going to be more than accepting of you and more than kind. I assume they have to be kind if they're just leading an army of teenagers across America. But don't ever be afraid to break out of your shell and reach out. Tell somebody what your intentions are. Reach out to people and really try to get your foot in the door. Be as respectful as you possibly can. Don't bombard people. Don't be over the top but it never hurts to shoot your shot if it's in a respectful way that isn't overbearing, that isn't just consistent bombarding to somebody. If you are kind and respectful, that is going to go a very long way. Another way that I think is genuinely a very good way for people to get into touring is by working at their local venue. Working at your local venue is a great way for you to be able to work alongside actual touring musicians and touring crews who are coming through and be able to learn from the house side of things, how production gets done, how all these various little things get done. I know that from the merch side of things, if I'm on tour playing bigger rooms and need additional sellers, if I'm coming through a city that I don't know anybody in, what I'll do is reach out to the venue's rep ahead of time and let them know that I'm looking for somebody to hire to sell with me and I will ask them for their recommendation. And if that person does a great job when I'm in that city again, I'll just reach out to the same person. And as we're working, we just always get to talking and I learn a little bit about their background and their history. I always ask if they've toured before, if they have any interest in touring in the future. 
And if they're doing a great job, I'll connect them with my friends who are playing the same cities if they're looking for a seller. And eventually all these little experiences add up to where if you're at a point where I know that you know what you're doing, if you've toured before, but you just haven't had the right opportunity fall into your lap. And if people are reaching out to me and asking if I know anybody who can do merch on so-and-so tour, if my usual friends aren't available or something, I already know all of these just as equally qualified people in other cities who are looking for work who I might be able to forward the resume to the hiring party. And that can always lead to somebody's first tour back or somebody's first tour ever or first gig. You just never know. I also remember from the production side of things when I was tour managing a smaller tour, the band and I were having an issue with our sound guy um, who was just not a very great person. He wasn't bad at his job per se, but we were just looking to maybe send him home and hire somebody else on, but we didn't even really know where to turn. And we just happened to pull into Philadelphia that night, where at the end of the night, the front of house guy for the show came up to me and kind of shot his shot. And he gave me his business card and he told me that he was looking to tour more if we ever needed somebody to do front of house for us. And it was really that simple where we were all almost like, wow, maybe we should just take this complete stranger with us right now because it really had gotten to that point, you know? And that's the thing. It's that you never know what could happen. So it's always good to just be confident and kind and shoot your shot. I know so many people who tour who got their start working at local venues, people who now do lighting on tour, got their start just working lights at a nightclub or a smaller room in the city that they live in people who are audio engineers, people who do front of house, people who are venue managers, house managers, production managers, etc. A lot of the times when you work at your local venue, it will be with people who have toured before or people who are just taking a break or people who are just in between gigs, etc. And if you're killing it at your job and you are a great person to be around and the people around you are seeing that and they have the opportunity to help lift you up, then I'm sure that they will. And this is just a great first step into the live music world, into seeing how all of it actually works so that you have some venue experience and you know what it's like working with a venue's house staff, working on certain consoles, doing XYZ at a venue. You just needed that last push to kind of help get you there. And that's all it really takes for some people. So I definitely think that working at a venue is a great place to start as well. Another way that I think people can get into the live music industry is through interning. Now, unfortunately, most if not all music industry internships are unpaid, which is a huge downside. Um, I remember for me specifically, there was a two month period in my last year of college where I had to do a internship over the summer in order to get some credits that I needed in order to graduate. Now, I got an internship at Hopeless Records I got this internship through a manager of a band that I had toured with who connected me with somebody at the label that he was friends with who reached out to me and offered me this position because they knew that I needed the college credits. I spent the first two months of that summer on Warp Tour, tour managing and doing merch for Broadside. I had to save up all of the money that I made this summer and kind of use that in order to be able to then live in LA for a month and a half and do this internship at Hopeless because it was unpaid. And working these unpaid internships is not an option for everybody and it truthfully wasn't even easy to do with the money that I had saved up. I was just lucky that I had the opportunity to just work for two months straight beforehand. But that being said, if you are able to do an internship, it could be really beneficial, especially because you'll meet so many great people who are already doing the job that you want to be doing. And you could learn a lot of new skills and a lot of new things that you didn't know prior to the internship. Sometimes you might even be able to work directly with some of their bands if it's a smaller label. I remember particularly at Hopeless Records, there were days where we had bands come into the office and I think about 75% of the time, they were artists that I had already toured with or artists that I already knew or maybe just knew in passing. So when they came into the office, it was just a further way to solidify the relationship that I had with these people. 
And sometimes after work, I would go out to lunch with certain bands that I already knew and we would hang out and catch up. And it was a really good experience that I wouldn't have had if I hadn't been living in LA and working that internship. An internship is also a great way to pick up new skills. Like I was saying, I learned a lot about marketing. I learned a lot about a and I learned a lot about the business side of things that I wouldn't have known otherwise. So it was definitely a very beneficial experience. And a lot of the individuals that I met there are still my friends to this day. And I think it took that internship for me to be able to figure out that maybe working at a record label is not something that I want to do in the immediate future, but it was really good to learn about how that kind of thing works so that I could have this realization. And maybe one day down the line, I will want to work at a label again, but It also helped me realize that for now, live music is what I'm more so interested in. And maybe you'll have the same experience or maybe you'll have the complete opposite experience where working at a label will sway you to more of the business side of the music industry. And that's great too. It's just really good to have these experiences so that you can truly know. Another thing that I think people can do, which I don't really recommend because it isn't as effective. Well, it's usually not as effective as all these other methods, but... I think that if you really wanted to, you could reach out to artist managers personally, send them an email with a little bit about yourself, a little bit about what you want to do in the music industry, along with your resume, and tell them a little bit about what you would like to do. For example, shoot their artist show in your city or go on tour with their artists when they go out on XYZ tour and just see what happens. I guarantee most of these emails will go unanswered because a lot of these people are getting probably dozens of emails just like yours, but you truly never know what could happen because through doing this, I have gotten one of my biggest touring gigs um, just by emailing a manager and telling him that we had a few mutual friends and one of my friends recommended I reach out to them. This is my resume. If you're ever looking for a merch manager, let me know. And by some wacky coincidence, the manager I had reached out to at the time was looking for a merch manager and actually hired me on to go on tour with this artist and become a part of their team. And that was a really exciting moment for me because it was a fairly big artist. And one thing to keep in mind was at the time, I did already have a lot of experience under my belt. So that definitely helped. You have to be really realistic about your expectations. You have to be honest with people. Don't tell them that you know how to do certain things or that you have a certain amount of experience if you don't, because that will bite you in the butt a little bit later down the line. I'm a big fan of fake it till you make it, but only to a certain degree. You can't make up a whole history about yourself because that will get you into a lot of trouble down the line. Another thing that I think people could possibly do is if you see your favorite band always has the same merch person and you talk to them at shows sometimes, just shoot them a message on social media, Instagram or Twitter, and ask them if they would like to grab a coffee with you in their city or ask them if you can go to a show and shadow them and learn about what they do on a day-to-day basis. If the person is nice and willing and not swamps that day, then you never know. They might say yes and allow you to learn from them. And that could be a very good and personal experience to have as well. One thing that I get asked about very frequently is about going to college when it comes to wanting to work in live music. Now, I don't know what it's like for the audio and technical side of things because I work on the more business side of touring, but I did go to college for four years And I genuinely think that if I wasn't on a scholarship for all four of those years, I likely would not have finished. Now, that's not to say that the college experience isn't beneficial for a lot of people. I just know that for me, being proactive in my local music scene was doing a lot more for me and getting me a lot further than just sitting in a classroom was. If you do decide to go to college for music, you will find that All of your classmates who are being proactive on the side, who are going to shows, working internships, working at their local venues, on a street team, etc. Those kids who are being proactive are the ones who are going to end up getting further in their careers. If you're just sitting in a classroom and you're learning about how to book a tour or you're learning about how to tour manage, but you're not actually going out and applying those skills and doing it, it's not the same thing. If you're not actually going out and meeting people, you really won't get anywhere in the end. 
Having that degree might be beneficial in the future if your long-term goal is to maybe settle down at a record label, which is kind of why I stuck out my college career because I don't know what I'm going to want to do in the future. But if you're just looking to tour right now and you are thinking about, should I go to college for this or should I just kind of throw myself out there? I think it would be far more beneficial for you to just put yourself out there and actively try to get on tours rather than try to sit in a classroom and figure out how you're going to do this in four years. The college experience itself was great because I was able to meet a lot of like-minded people who are still my friends, a lot of people who are now doing the same thing, people who are working at local venues that I'll come through on tour. Some of my classmates who are proactive are now artist managers or they're also touring. And all of that really came from actively going after what you want to do. Now to kind of tie that in with my experience that I had when I was in college, I just remember in the moment... I would sometimes get messages or texts or emails asking me if I was available for certain tours during certain months and I would have to turn them down because I was full-time in college and in the moment it all felt very defeating. I remember feeling like I wasn't going to get anywhere because I wasn't able to actively go out and do these tours at every single chance that they came. and. I really wish that I could go back in time and tell myself that it will be okay because of how defeating it felt in the moment. And I'm sure that if I had proactively been doing all of that in the past rather than turning gigs down in order to go to class, that I would have gotten to the point that I'm at a lot faster. But at the end of the day, it is all about your work ethic. And if you really want to get to a certain level, as long as you work hard and you're kind, you will get there eventually. Because I was in school full-time, the only time that I was really able to tour before I was 21 and graduated was over the summers during Warp Tour and occasionally over the winter when we had a very long like month and a half winter break. So over the summers, ever since I was 16, I was doing Warp Tours. Um, when I was 16, the very first band who kind of brought my friends and I on was a band called Echo Smith, who were also 16 years old. And they kind of just invited my friends and I to a bunch of shows and let us see the behind the scenes of what the festival was really like and allowed us to work with them by running their meet and greets, hang up their promo material before the shows. And every time that band was touring on the East Coast, they would let my friends and I come to the shows, also help them do merch, help them run their meet and greets. And being able to do that with that band was the reason I was able to then meet a lot of great people who were able to help me get my foot in the door on the next Warp Tour. And in 2016, I was finally able to do my first full Warp Tour when I was 18. I was friends with a band called Like Pacific. And at a certain point on the tour, they had heard that Broadside were looking for a merch person to bring on because they had somebody who was handling tour management and merch and it was just getting to be too much for them. So Broadside took me on because all of my friends were recommending me to them and I did that tour for next to nothing and I knew what I was getting myself into. I was just really, really trying to break into the world of touring. And that's another important thing to keep in mind is that when you start touring, you likely will not be making a lot of money. Of course, depending on what area of touring you're getting into and what level you're on. But the fact of the matter is, if you are starting small and organically kind of like I did, you are just not going to be making money at first. And that's because a lot of the bands who are on that level, they just aren't making money themselves. They can't really afford to be paying a crew So that's also kind of an investment that you have to make in yourself, and it's not the easiest to do, but it's definitely important to keep in mind that when you start touring, you will not be making a killing. But anyways, not to go off on a tangent, when I did that Warp Tour with Broadside, um, their tour manager was the first person who really taught me how to count in and count out and settle the merch cut every day. And that was a really great experience for me because I was able to crush it that summer. And then the next summer, I was able to come back with a far bigger company and make a lot more money managing a lot more merchandise because I already had all of that experience under my belt. And the summer after that, I came back to Warp Tour with Broadside again as their tour manager and merch manager. And we were doing far better numbers than we had before. And I was already so well-versed in merch by that point that I knew exactly what I was doing. I was very confident in my position and it really just took all those years of experience and growth and working with other bands that I had met on the side. And through my touring with Broadside, I was able to meet other bands 
and go on other tours, go on bigger tours, and grow from there. I met Bobby, who plays bass for Emerosa, through doing Warp Tour with Broadside, and he hired me to be Emerosa's merch manager the summer after that. And on that tour, I met a band called Selfish Things, who were opening on that tour, who ended up taking me with them for the rest of that year. And with this band, Selfish Things, I wasn't just a merch manager, but I was also a tour manager. And I also became their tour photographer through that because photography was always something that I liked to do as a hobby. And with these smaller bands who can only keep a small crew, they really like to go for people who are versed in more jobs than just one. So with Selfish Things, because I already had a lot of good tour managing experience, and I was a very experienced merchandise manager, they wanted to take me out with them when their merchandise manager no longer could go with them. And because I had this photography experience under my belt, they were also hiring me on to take photos for them too. And through doing that, I went on tour with a band called Trash Boat after the Selfish Things tour with Don Broco had come to an end. And Trash Boat had gone on tour with a band called The Wonder Years. And this is actually how I started working with The Wonder Years. I remember at the very first show of that tour, Soupy had approached me because he saw me standing around with a camera on my neck and he knew I was with Trash Boat and he introduced himself to me and he asked me if I was on the whole run with Trash Boat or if I was just there locally. And I told him I was on the whole run with the band and he asked me if I would be interested in shooting The Wonder Years. He asked if he could see my website or my Instagram and asked me for my rate and asked if I would be interested in shooting for them. And I know I never really told this story to anybody, but I remember I just looked at Soupy and I was like, mm, let me get back to you because I was just weirdly nervous. I had gone back to the green room and I asked Trash Boat for their advice, whether or not I should do double duty, like shoot photos for them and for the Wonder Years, because I was just really nervous about having all that extra work on my plate for the headliner, like a bands that I listened to a lot in high school. And I just wasn't really sure what to do because I was so nervous. And they all calmed me down and were like, no, just go for it. They'll pay you well. They're, they'll treat you well. They're so nice. It's definitely worth it. And I was like, you're right. I'm just psyching myself out. I'm going to go back to Soupy and tell him that I can do it. So that's exactly what I did. I just went into their green room and gave him my website, gave him my Instagram. He just came right back into our room and he told me that my stuff was great and that starting at the next show, they would love to have me. And so from then on, I shot The Wonder Years at all of their Halloween shows on that tour, and that was that. But by the end of all of those shows, we had all just surprisingly become really good friends. We were all laughing and joking together that I remember at the last show, their bassist Josh had said to me, like, oh, we're doing a tour in February that's a headliner. If you are at all interested in coming on tour with us, we would love to have you. And I remember in the moment, I was just like, oh yeah, whatever. That's what everybody says. You know, nobody ever actually acts on it. At least that's the experience that I've had in the past. Just a lot of bark and no bite, let's say. So after a few weeks had gone by, I just shot their manager an email, not thinking that anything would really come of it and telling him that Josh had mentioned a headliner coming up and mentioned that he would love to have me. And I asked if that was still a possibility. And within a few days, their management had reached back out to me and sent me a rate, sent me details for the tour and asked me if I was interested. And I was just so excited. I remember I emailed back yes. And within moments, they told me that I was confirmed. And I just felt so over the moon about it because I was very familiar with their tour photographer, Kelly Mason, who is amazing at what she does. And I'd known her for years. And as someone who didn't follow the Wonder Years closely at all, like prior to meeting them, I didn't know that she was no longer touring full time. And I didn't even think that touring with them was a possibility at all. When I was going into the tour with Trash Boat, I really just thought that it would be a quick, easy, and fun thing for me to do just photos for, you know? I never expected for this whole new opportunity to blossom from it. And I'm just so grateful that it did because the Wonder Years are some of my favorite people that I've ever met. And being able to tour with them led to a bunch of other great opportunities and a bunch of other great friendships. After I toured with the Wonder Years, um, the pandemic kind of cut that short. 
But in 2021, when touring started to pick up again, my friend Bobby, who played bass in Amorosa, reached out to me because a friend of his had posted that she was looking for a merch manager on a tour that she was currently on starting immediately. And he had recommended me to her saying that she and I would get along great and that it would be a great match. And again, I didn't really think anything would come of this recommendation, but I actually did end up getting the job. The woman who reached out to me, Selena, is one of my absolute best friends to this day. And she was able to hire me on to do the Lewis the Child tour with her, which is how we met. And none of that would have happened if my friend Bobby hadn't connected us. And from there on out, a lot of the tours that I started getting were through just word of mouth. It was just people who had seen me do so well on all of my other tours, recommending me for all these bigger tours. And now because I had names like The Wonder Years and Lewis the Child under my belt, it confirmed that I was more than qualified to be doing these bigger scale tours. And that's what started leading to me getting bigger and bigger opportunities. To where now, in 2022, I'm going on tour with an artist called Remy Wolf and another artist called Girl in Red, two very amazing female artists that I'm personally a fan of. And I'm genuinely very excited to start doing more tours in that kind of realm of music. And this is the first time in my life where I actually feel confident and comfortable in my career because I know that I've finally reached a point where I have proven myself to the point where I can now lift my friends up with me. When I get gigs that I can't accept because of scheduling conflicts, I'm able to then recommend friends of mine who I think would be perfect. And I'm able to now be that person to help people get to the level where I'm at, whereas before I was just struggling to get here as well. So you never really know what can happen. You never really know what your relationships with people will blossom into. You never know what these friendships that you make will lead to. So it's always important to just keep in mind that it does start locally. You have to make friends and the rest will follow. If you are a hard worker, if you believe in yourself, I probably sound like a broken record at this point, but I truly believe that if you want it bad enough, you can make it happen for yourself and you can do it. Thank you so much for tuning into this very first episode of mine. If you listened this far, I really appreciate it. I really hope that I was able to provide some actual insight to anyone who was looking for it. If there is any specific topic that anyone wants to hear me talk about, um, please either comment or DM me on Instagram or Twitter. I would love to make more episodes like this. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I don't know. I'm still really new to this. But thank you again for listening. And I'll see you next time. This has been OMG Tour Life. Bye.